I think we can all agree that Yu-Gi-Oh! is a complex card game. There's no question that when deck building you need to think about how you really want to think ahead and really gear your deck towards whatever your win condition is. If you weren't aware already, what have I told you that there's some absolutely convoluted as fuck cards to get out in this game. Yes, we already know there's plenty of ruling nightmares out there and all kinds of nonsense cards that do absolutely nothing or have giant bibles worth of text on there. Well, what about the cards that are almost fucking impossible to summon or just ridiculously convoluted that it's really not worth it? In this video, we're going to be talking a little bit about some of those cards so you can try it out for yourself and just see how fucking terrible they are. In the game's history, there's been some win conditions or deck themes that frankly just aren't worth pursuing. These are all those kind of cards that you do see your uber casuals playing and claiming they used it to defeat everyone at a regionals. Pro tip, nobody believes you. They're basically anime cards because that's the kind of dumb fucking plot armor you'd need to get these out consistently. In particular, we're looking at monsters with 2000 IQ summoning conditions and requirements. And yes, I am sure there's a 6 card combo to set these up, but historically, they've never been worth pursuing, regardless of how powerful these cards are. Anyway, enough of my waffling bullshit, let's take a look at some of my picks. We start off first with the absolutely classic Gate Guardian. In essence, you have to tribute Sango of the Thunder, Kazujin, and Suijin in order to summon it out, which are all to tribute summon monsters. Meaning you'd have to go through the giant fucking hoops of summoning two monsters to tribute one off, two for another, two for another, to get all three onto the field to then tribute off for Gate Guardian, which also had to be in your fucking hand at the same time. Talk about convoluted bullshit. Next up we're looking at Spirit of the Fair, another card that requires all kinds of mental gymnastics to try and figure out how the fuck you're supposed to summon this thing. In essence, it needs to be summoned by the effects of the first sarcophagus, and all you get for your money, when it's special summoned, you can special summon up to four level two or lower zombie monsters that are all normal from your graveyard. We've also got Exodia Necros. Not only is it prohibitively fucking stupid to try and summon, the fact that you have to run all five pieces of Exodia as well as this, and contract with Exodia in order to get the fucking thing out, is just a recipe for disaster. And what do you get for all of this effort and work? A card that can't be destroyed, which I guess at the time might have been okay, but that's really about as far as it went. It's worth noting as well, they could still be destroyed by monster effects, which is also kind of fucking stupid. Every turn during your standby phase, it gains 500 attacks. So it becomes a bit of a big beater, but it's still pretty easy to remove off the field. It's also worth noting that unless you've got all five pieces of Exodia in your graveyard, it gets destroyed. It literally blows itself up if your opponent removes any of the pieces of Exodia from the grave. Absolutely fucking pointless. It doesn't really do anything. If it won you the game a bit like Exodia did, I can understand that it might be somewhat exciting, but it doesn't even do that. It literally stands there and waits to get out by man -eater bug. Perfectly, ultimately fucking stupid Great Moth. Can I just tell you guys, I absolutely fucking hate moths. If they just disappeared from existence, I'd be absolutely okay with it. So that gives me even more reason to think that this card is absolutely ridiculous to even try and play. If Weevil has a problem with this, he can eat my fucking ass. To get this absolutely smooth brain monster out that's going to fly around your lamp and fly into your fucking head in the process, you've got to do some absolute bullshit. That's right, in order to get this out, you've got to tribute one Petite Moth on your sixth turn or later after it was equipped with Cocoon of Evolution. Your opponent literally has to do nothing for like seven turns for you to get out a 3500 beta that does literally nothing else. It's just big and really easy to get rid of. Another casual is fuck card that I'm sure some casuals are going to absolutely cut their own throats when I insult it is Dark Sage. In order to get this out, you've effectively got to get Dark Magician on the field. You've also got to get Time Wizard on the field, activate Time Wizard's effect, and get it to fucking go off. And then after that, you have to have it in your hand, on top of all of this, to get it summoned out for a 2800 beta that lets you add a spell card from your deck to your hand. Again, the levels of plot armor needed to get round this fucking card are absolutely unreal. And honestly, anyone who wants to pursue using this in their deck deserves every bit of pain and misery that they get. Next up, we've got the Alphabeti Spaghetti Robots, the A to the Z to the fucking XY to the Pi to the fucking 12th 
fucking fucking dragon buster catapult cannon tank things. All of these dumb fusions that require a gazillion fucking monsters that nobody in their right mind would be playing in the modern game. Not only that, they were also fucking useless at the time too. All of this to just summon big boys that really don't do anything of any fucking value. Absolutely terrible. I challenge anyone to take this to locals and not lose every single game. Next we've got a card that isn't actually released into the TCG but I wanted to cover it because it's absolutely fucking dense. Harakti, the creator of light. This is one of these cards that all the fucking weebs love and it's absolutely terrible. You have to summon it by using Obelisk, Slifer and the Winged Dragon of Ra. That's right, you have to tribute all three of them to get this out. You can't even use cards that would substitute with their names. They have to be the ones with the original names. Uh, and just summoning all three of those sounds like an absolute ball leg. The fact that you have to even run them in the first place just to get this goddamn thing out. Uh, and then you probably can't even use it in duels anyway. I'm pretty sure it's like not able to be played in duels. Basically, it's a giant fucking waste of time even if it was legal because there is zero chance that you're summoning this thing out. Next up, we got that Theonin, the Great Sphinx, that one card that everyone posts on Facebook thinking they have some sort of valuable card in their collection. Pro tip, you fucking don't. This piece of shit was given away free at the films. I've seen about a gazillion copies change hands because nobody could fucking give them away. Because people were literally giving them away at locals because they were that fucking useless. I remember at school there'd always be that one kid that would try and summon these bad boys that would just never work out well for them. They'd just get absolutely whomped in a matter of minutes. Basically, to summon it out, you have to pay 500 life points when Andro Sphinx and Sphinx Talea are both destroyed at the same time, which are already difficult enough to get out on their own. You need the fucking Pyramid of Light, you need to do some tribute in and all this kind of bad boy shit. So you basically have to do two lots of tributes to get them out or some shit I don't even remember because I don't remember what fucking Pyramid of Light does. It's just that goddamn bad. And then all you get is this absolute piece of shit that is a 3500 beta and then, you know, gets a little bit bigger, but that's about the height of it. It doesn't really fucking do anything except get big and really fucking convoluted to summon. You're better off just playing Desires and summoning Grand Marju. Next, we're looking at Venomonaga, the deity of poisonous snakes. I remember watching the GX series and thinking that this shit would be absolutely lit, but it really wasn't. It's absolutely fucking terrible. It's every bit as bad as you'd expect. The first thing to worth noting is that you have to play it in a deck full of reptiles to be of any kind of real use anyway, which in and of itself is an absolutely terrible start. On top of that, you have to play the dude one, whatever his name is, Venomanon, or whatever the fuck he's called. You also have to play Rise of the Snake Deity, which if I'm not mistaken is a trap card. Again, I'm just spitballing here because I don't even remember it's that kind of fucking pointless. And basically you have to meet all of these bullshit requirements to summon it out. Uh, it can't be destroyed by a bunch of shit, but it can be destroyed by a battle. It gains 500 attack for every reptile, but of course you're playing a bad deck, so you're probably not even making it far enough to even summon this thing anyway. And if you do somehow do it, well, then you get some sort of dual winning condition. In a nutshell, every time it inflicts battle damage, you put Hyper Venom Counter on it, and if it gets to three, you win the duel. The problem with this is that if it gets destroyed by battle, all of those fucking disappear, and you get to banish a uh, fucking reptile to bring the goddamn thing back, but then it's even weaker than it was before. It's just, it's just a bad fucking recipe. All of this set up for something absolutely useless. Zushin, the sleeping giant douchebag. The only thing giant about this guy is his belly and his titties. To get this out, you have to tribute a normal monster you control with 10 Zushin encounters. Every turn you can reveal it and then put a counter on a level 1 normal monster you control. You keep this card revealed until the end of the turn to place one counter on it. It's unaffected by other card effects and if it battles a monster during damage calculation, the attack and defense of this card become equal to the current attack of the monster it's battling, plus a thousand during damage calculation only. So it basically only gets big enough to just run over monsters and it takes 10 fucking turns of keeping a level 1 normal monster on the field that you have to hope your opponent doesn't out. Even if they're nice enough to let you get there, it's still fucking terrible. Honestly though, I think we've really just saved the best for last. Sophia, Goddess of Rebirth. A card infamous for being absolutely fucking atrocious. The only way to special summon it is by banishing a face-up ritual, fusion, synchro, and XE monster from anywhere on the field. In the year of our lord 2020, no motherfucker is playing rituals. Let's start off with that. On top of that, you have to have fusion, a synchro, and an XE monster on anywhere on the field. Again, a highly unlikely set of circumstances. 
Now, the end effect is okay, I guess. It banishes a bunch of shit. Hands, fields, graveyards, all that good stuff. And it can't be negated, and it can't be responded to, and that's about it. You end up with a 3600 beater with your opponent top decking. But all of that set up for this, the fact that you've even got to play this in your fucking deck, I, I mean, if it was like an extra deck monster, it might have a slightly better usage, but the fact that it's a main deck monster... It's just one of the world's biggest fucking bricks to just banish a bunch of shit. I don't know if there's some sort of cheeky way to try and get this fucking thing out, but I've never seen it happen, and I don't think I ever will. But that brings us to a close on the video. If this has inspired you to go out and buy some absolutely fucking terrible cards to try and prove me wrong, you're welcome to do so. Go check out our sponsors in the description. There is a link to Jam Jam Cards UK. They give me all the hookup on my cards, and they'll give you a hookup on some sweet cheap deals if you enjoy this kind of absolutely rubbish content you can go ahead and ask them to get a card signed for you we can arrange for that to happen and on that note if you absolutely enjoyed this content the fact that you made it this far probably indicates that you fucking hated it as much as i hated making it then you might as well hit subscribe if you're in for a penny you might as well be in for a pound thank you very much for checking in guys hopefully you have enjoyed the content and i'll see you in the next one this content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.